It is good to be with you this morning. I feel inspired and honored to be on this stage today. Um, as I walked, or I, I parked my car and then tried to find the theater space here, I walked up to the wrong building. Uh, but on, on, on the top of the building, it said, Inspire, Ridley College, inspiring, flourish, inspiring flourishing lives to transform our globe. And I really feel that's what's happening here this morning. Uh, that you are being transformed as I've listened to the speakers who have been here today. So really grateful for this opportunity. Really, I am here simply because Raina, one of the students here, inspired me. She sparked a thought in me that turned into a personal challenge. Thoughts lead us, don't they? Thoughts inspire us. Thoughts can inspire us to action. Thoughts can also lead us to inaction. What thoughts are leading and inspiring you today? As a high school student, I stayed very close to the library. I was an insecure student, and it was a, the library was a place for me to hide. I could camouflage myself, myself behind the, the stacks of books and find one of those study carols that was just make me feel real safe. Fear had an intense grasp over me. It filled my thoughts about what, what others thought about me, and it motivated me. It led me. It led my actions, my thoughts. It led me to believe that I was in an unsafe environment, and so I need to hide. I need to cuddle up and be close to myself so nobody else would, would enter in. I worked hard to remain out of sight as possible. I felt powerless to change my circumstances. My thoughts, my thoughts led me to inaction. My family history includes many farmers who settled in the Waterloo region of Ontario, just about 90 minutes away from here to the west of us. My grandparents and parents spoke a Pennsylvania Dutch dialect that sounded funny and unfamiliar to me as a child. One of the sayings that I learned from my father was this, mach me de wit, de douche doch. And he would say this, repeat this to us, mach me de wit, de douche doch. And loosely translated, it means, do what you will, you will anyway. Essentially, he was tossing me off and saying, you will, nothing I say is going to matter. In my experience with three children who have come through the, ex the teenage years and have now become young adults, I have become aware that there are times that I'm led by that thought. Do what you will, you will anyway. What kind of action does that lead me to? As I've thought about that over the years, I realize that that thought leads me to inaction. What kinds of action does it cause in me? The belief that I have very little power, I have very little influence. I don't, so with my three children, it, it causes me to refrain from calling them, to avoid calling them, don't, not initiating conversation. I choose to focus on work and other things that bring me more tapping on the back and kudos. Um, the, the relationship then loses its connection, its closeness. We begin to experience disconnect setting in between us. I needed something or someone to help me realize I had more power than I thought I had. In my case, it was my wife. She placed the thought in my head that perhaps there was more opportunity in the positive presence that I could have with my children and intent behind even a simple text or an encouraging word that I could really have some more impact on my children. So I began to get more intentional about my interactions with them, and soon I began to realize that I really did have more power than I thought I had. Last week, my son, out in BC, he sent me a text message. He said, Dad, have you read this book? He began listening to a book, um, an audio book, called Everyone Communicates, But Few Connect. The thought inspired me sprouted another uh, fascinating text exchange as we actively sought to apply some of the principles then that we both 
experienced by reading or listening to this book. We were discovering these things together. My son inspired me. He has more power than he thinks he has. How about on a larger scale? Do you ever feel like the problems around you are way too big for you to do anything about? Way too large for you to make a difference. Headlines around the world can make us feel small, can make us feel powerless. War, terror, human trafficking, poverty, inflation, all of these things can make us feel small. They can overwhelm. They can make us feel powerless. Thoughts that lead us in these kinds of circumstances may make us think, there's nothing that I can do that will make any difference. 50 years ago, four friends, Liney, Selma, Susan, and Sarah, met together in Selma's home for tea. At the time, they were part of an organization that was in need of funding. They came up with an idea, a thought, about a machine that would turn clothing into cash. That thought led them to create an MCC thrift shop in Canada. Mennonite Central Committee is an organization that focuses its efforts on relief, development, and peace here at home and around the world by responding to basic human need and peace and justice, working for peace and justice. Their idea sprouted into action, and 50 years later, here in Canada, there are over 50 MCC thrift shops, social enterprises that have ongoing, impactful work in our world. These four women had more power than they thought they had. The Christian Benefit Thrift Shop in St. Catharines is one of those social enterprises, one of those thrift shops. I have the privilege of overseeing the group of individuals that volunteer and serve in this space. This shop was inspired by those four women 50 years ago. Over the years, this shop alone in St. Catharines has um, funded and funneled over many millions of dollars to the work of MCC. Volunteers at MCC Thrift inspire me. Most of our volunteers are retirees. They are proactive retirees, so I like to call them pro-tirees. At a time in life when retirement means a life of leisure, of no work, putting aside work, our volunteers take on an opportunity to use their skill, their strength, their time, their energy, and their presence to commit themselves to something bigger than themselves. Our volunteers have more power than they think they have. Several years ago, we had a co-op student that came into our shop to volunteer and to put in their, their required hours for school. At the time, I didn't think a thrift shop would have much to offer for a student. What kind of technical skills does a thrift shop have that a, a student could learn? We weren't teaching welding or auto mechanics or, or bookkeeping or anything like that, those, those technical skills. But along came Nate. Nate spent September to December with us. He sorted through loads of clothing and textiles. He picked up furniture, lugged around furniture, and placed it in our store to make it look like a welcoming space. And he interacted with other volunteers. The end of the semester came, and Nate moved on to another co-op in January. But a couple of weeks later, he realized that wasn't working out for him, so Nate came back to join us in our shop, again for another semester. At the end of the semester, I asked Nate, what was, it, what was the most important thing that you learned in your time with us? Nate's answer surprised me. I didn't have any, it didn't have anything to do with tasks or responsibilities. He told me it was simply learning how to talk and interact with people from other generations than him. That was a significant skill that he learned. That skill, as Nate was entering into police foundations, was a skill that would come invaluable to him in the years ahead. Our shop, our volunteers, 
I had more power than I thought we had. When it comes to the big, some of the big problems in our world, MCC thrift is ahead of its time. Climate change is affecting many parts of our planet. And I often remind our volunteers that, that we are already doing the work of, that affects change that we hope others will join us in. When we're encouraged to buy less, we're already helping people to do that. When we're encouraged to reduce what's going to the landfill, we're already helping people to do that. One individual in my organization has challenged me to take up the Climate Action for Peace pledge. And he tells me, even if it feels small, do it anyway. That thought has inspired me to send a letter to my local MP to voice our collective concerns. Together, we have more power than we think we have. How about this idea of working for peace? It seems so far out, so difficult for us to achieve or to work together to achieve. We hear about war and conflict constantly in our headlines and around the world. In comment sections and in social media exchanges, words are exchanged that escalate conflict. Maybe you've experienced that yourself. Opinions fly. Is it possible? Is it possible that peace could begin closer to home? What if instead of preparing a response or taking a defensive posture, I would simply pause? What if instead of throwing back words that escalate or cause the person that's hurting me to inflame their words and their emotions, what if I would just be curious about what, the, what is behind those words? What could it be that is causing them to feel the way that they are, they are feeling or to react the way they're acting? What thoughts are leading them to act in the way that they are acting? In my local context, just like in any work con context or workplace, we experience conflict from time to time. We're learning to put into practice this idea of pausing when we feel tension. I sent an email recently that caused a reaction in one of my coworkers. It stirred a difficult emotion in them. They took time to write out some of those feelings so that they felt they could express their feelings clearly and concisely to me. I listened. I had to put aside my internal reaction to respond right away and correct anything that was said that I knew wasn't quite right or as I understood it. Instead, I chose to ask questions. Questions that would help me to understand better. It took courage for my colleague to approach me with these difficult emotions. What resulted was a healthy conversation and ongoing dialogue that resulted in better communication and better working atmosphere for both of us. And that atmosphere impacts others because we manage and oversee many others. My colleague had more power than they thought they had. This whole enterprise, what I get to be a part of and interact with every day is a win all around. Our donors, win because they feel good about cleaning out unused goods in their kitchens, their closets, their bedrooms, and their garages. Our volunteers who, possess, uh, pro who process the goods experience and enjoy the connection with other volunteers that they get to interact with. Many of them have, have become close friends and enjoy inviting each other into their homes. They find fulfillment in serving with a purpose that is beyond their own pleasure. Customers also win. They get an opportunity to purchase items that have an impact far beyond the corporate profit. The little boy that I had the chance to, to visit in Ethiopia three years ago, with his hands cupped below a water pump, receiving fresh water because of the work that we had done together. His life and his, his community 
was impacted by our work together. We have more power than we think we have. What thoughts are inspiring you to act? Are there thoughts, perhaps, that are inspiring you not to act? Where are those thoughts that are inspiring you to action? You have more power than you think you have. Thank you.